life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Lift your hands. Bless the Lord. Inside and outside. He's worthy of our praise. Lift your hands and bless him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your ability and your willingness to change us. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift your hands and sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Hey, affect my life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Close the voices. Sing it to him. Affect my life, breathe on me. We look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to One more time, just the voices. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for that. Affect my life, breathe on me. As I look to you for that. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place, 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 sing it to him. Shena na na de na Maria, Shena na na mo so na na Maria da da, Shena na 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 mo se na na Maria. Take your place, take your place. Oh 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 oh. Come on, lift your hands and worship His Majesty. Just the voices. Oh, 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 oh.
It's a chant in the spirit. It's a call for the heavens to revive and transform and heal and bless. receive this song this song has been a chord for me in the spirit there's something about receiving specific songs for seasons there are many songs by the grace of God that we have received in this place but there's just a strange anointing upon this song it's, it's like a call and response it compels something within you to respond to the heavens I've tried and tried to stop singing this song, but it will not leave. It's a chant in the spirit. It does something to my spirit. It does something to my spirit. Yeah. 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 Help us worship team. time all the instruments our voices and our hands lifted yeah. Help me worship team. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
turn it into a prayer tonight and cry for a visitation. Lord, I have come to feast at your table. I have come to feast at your table. We have come to draw strength tonight. Strength for the journey ahead. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight, invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man... The mandate to dominate. The word dominion means sovereign control. Sovereign control. And every religion, every movement promises one thing. Dominion. The fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear, it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion. 
but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of christ in genesis 1 26 the bible says and elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know an information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself. Let me tell you how Satan destroys people. He keeps you in ignorance. Are we together now? And he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant. That's the first person. His end is predictable. Number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act 
now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you will see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we we're having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure 
There are times you see pastors oscillating. You go for a conference and hear something and you come back. Ship it to your congregation and teach them. Only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way. And then the members are hearing a lot of things, but they are not growing. Hallelujah. Number two, every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked for a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they, are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their tithe. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes... We, we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. 
every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny help us money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say i got up and i think i feel like saying this today and then people jump and then at the end of the service you ask the people what did you gain and the person tells you honestly me too i don't know but my my spirit picked something you are not going to grow that way i assure you did you know did you know that i've taught us here it's not your intention that becomes your reality but your conviction you want to be great but something about your belief will limit you you want to be greatly anointed but there is something you must know i'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of jesus christ i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more more and more more and when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is a delightsome a likable personality something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project this project you see called koinonia the benefit of koinonia 
will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when god's generals were there preaching what was he doing to, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them from 25 years they were there in the crusade and the children were they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change so the men of god were preaching and the devil said i, I give up on these ones but he started growing with them channel o came mtv came right all kinds of things came they grew they didn't train them they grew they shaped their ideology they are the ones today who are the leaders prime ministers heads of banks heads of institutions and so a system runs i mean they play the world like a chess but it's going to change i know we don't look like it yet i assure you you quote me i've been saying certain things that i'll keep saying we will all be great and the best part is that we will know ourselves that's what will happen don't trivialize the power of the holy spirit just give him time he will surprise you give him time write this word down let's begin our teaching strategic kingdom influence um let's define influence very quickly i have a lot to talk about and i want us to finish very fast amen and amen and amen influence what is influence the capacity to have an effect influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of something or someone Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way. Change mindsets. So, the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets, shape opinions, and move others to act in a certain way is called influence. How we need this. One of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism. It's called influence. And I add kingdom influence. We have a mandate as a church. Listen, listen. We are not just here roaming around, wondering what to do with our lives. There is a mandate upon us. That mandate is found in Genesis 1.26. Help us, media. Genesis 1.26, Matthew 6, verse 10, and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1.26, Matthew 6, verse 10, Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1.26, Let us make man after our image, our likeness, and let them have sovereign control, dominion, 
sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are god's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of god's kingdom we have a mandate as a church matthew 6 verse 10 everyone read jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the lord's prayer one to read thy kingdom come how by your will being done in earth exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please want to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature hold on the first assignment is go that means he expects a body that is moving action go then he tells you the strategy he says he didn't say go around the street he says go into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the Christ. Look up, please. Let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from. Our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today. 
are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance there is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we are not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like i'm sure by the time they are adults will be using e-cookers oh don't limit the mind of man believe me who knew that somebody will create something as as much as i mean hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air just like that even you you can't hang in the air yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air so don't don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed the interests of people have changed 
perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen i mean there's artificial intelligence in phones phones can feel phones can record they can have memories so the 21st century is here and what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah 
the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa ee adeboe i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenets and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustments everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatic, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions. Are we together? koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in 
and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a code ah, you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or oh, i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything no whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down we must carefully study the word please let's write let's hurry up we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance listen the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence 
the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that i say i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One to read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? 
global approach to life we start up businesses with no idea of global approach the average business in nigeria if it lasts 10 years is a miracle 15 years is a wonder we don't think far right the average church do you know how many churches start in january and by december they are dead because the way the pastor started and was running you would think rapture will happen tomorrow and he runs no no sense of leadership no pace setter trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1. Of whom Daniel was what? Please read it. Of whom Daniel was? First means a pace setter. First means a leader. Surpassing ordinary standards. He said that the princes might give accounts to them. And the kings should have no damage. Verse 3. Then this Daniel was what? Everybody say pace setters. This Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit. Was it because he was a Christian? Because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible. And the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, have for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41, give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44, please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we move to 38 down to 44. Now look up please everyone, this was the story of Joseph. Now therefore, this is Joseph, advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find ah, yeah, 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 yeah. may that be your testimony? Yeah. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. 
Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we are doing it. Say that's the, I'm, a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh he says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where is my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mode. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are earning hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, 
my name is Nas Dangote, even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And no, 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 no. A passion to excel. You are in agriculture. You are thinking, how do I lead? Not Kai. How do I get my small one mudu of beans? Me and my wife just not even complaining. You are not pace setting. You are not trailblazing. Remember. That if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God to come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it. And it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character. Moral uprightness. From the way you speak. The way you dress. The way you behave. You want to be a leader. You are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got it. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me, if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. 
I'll preach you. Oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you, for as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all these nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being. You bring in your personality. You bring in your mindset. It doesn't just change when you become CEO. It's an attitude. Hallelujah. Moral uprightness. You are calm. Not the person moving around, gossiping about everybody, saying everything about everybody. No. Only cheap people do that. Only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No! No! Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bam 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 bam. Madam is there tea. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that it can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do. That's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up. And say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. 
character. You get to somebody's house in five minutes, you have entered their kitchen. They are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat the world. They are watching you. There are some of us like this, I must talk to you. I want you to become something and we must curb these things. Don't do that. Say, no, 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 we are free. They always allow me. No, see, let me tell you. Part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good. You must see, there are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction they just feel tall this man of god has prayed and you see them i'm ready to go and you see them pinching themselves giving signs and somebody will enter and they come out and then i tell them i said no 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 no. i receive it i bless it and i sew it back and they say, ah, man of god can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us Abba, you collect and count it and say Abba, madam you too Abba, what is all this how much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil deliverance the money. You are dropping 10,000. You drop it on the table. Yeah, I say, madam, add something. Are you fake? No, but you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress. Now, please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. I'm, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this boy i have to obey god from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen no come on i want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people? Loyalty is a trust, brothers and sisters. So God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy... Uh, this and that there are men of God that do that I'm sorry if, if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in June choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people sometimes we do these things sincerely but i'm telling you now there is need for adjustment don't do that see bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence. Excellence. What is excellence? The quality of doing things well. The quality of doing things well. Write this down. The difference most times is not what you do but how you do it. The difference, brothers and sisters, 
that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for cabin is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that they, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match But listen, it's excellent. So you will be rewarded. When you are excellent, you name your price. You see that? What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu. You think he's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol, he has um, some popcorn machines on campus. And then I told him, I said, I want to taste your popcorn. Let me see what and what do you put there. And he was telling me what he said. The other one is stories. Bring it. Let me taste. Let me know whether you are excellent. See, let me tell you something. The minimum standard in our world today is excellence. Even if you don't have the finance to grow into it, have the mindset first. So you have only one cloth. And that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent. You are because already you, you've had an ideology of excellence. You iron it. You look smart. It's not doing ministry that makes you excel. It's how you do it. It's not preaching that makes you excel. It's how you preach. It's not doing business that makes customers come to you. It's how you do it. It's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four give me a few minutes here and we'll pray open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay herein is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable result it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results 
pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God waiting for their manifestation I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit as I'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence. Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control. Uncommon supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know she said you are pastor joshua i said yes I said, ah, well done, sir. And I looked, I said, ah, madam, how are we? You know, I was playing with her little boy. And I said, where do I know you? And the woman just nodded. She said she was going to tell me a little story. And she said, I came for counseling two years ago, looking as wretched as anything. A single mom with a child, no hope for marriage, finances crashing, everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they will send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this Brothers and sisters, say results. One result will end every kind of argument. Every kind. Is God speaking to us? Results. Pastors produce results. Produce results. You know why our prayer department, by the grace of God, is like... It's like second koinonia. It's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results. They are praying and they are seeing results. 
nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you're a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with no no you're a businessman don't worry that people don't believe in you my brother produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody even if all you are doing is parking soccer away just produce results let me tell you something it's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness not your words i can do this i am this and that no i can pray where is the fruit of the prayer i can fast where is the fruit of the fasting i am warded where is it results you want to command influence in our world today you need results you need results this is the apex of this teaching tonight you need results supernatural results write the following things about results results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us matthew 14 please let's look at it matthew 14. Mm. Matthew 14 we read from verse 23 and um, we read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them doing what brothers and sisters the same water the same water was responding differently to jesus the same water you know why because jesus was operating on certain principles 
Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. Hmm. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sing. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking. The other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria. Same economy. Same dollar rise. Same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry. Same being in the north where they say people are persecuted. But then you sustain a mystery. Jesus was standing. And when Peter cried, he lifted Peter and Peter stood just like him. Meaning you can bring people to your experience. Listen. There was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, results are a product of mastery. 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 Exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence. Is what separates men from boys diligence number four and I want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when results become supernatural and consistent then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it when results become notable and consistent listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one day it's like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve Joe, late Steve Joe, Apple founder, 1991. 1991. He was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results. Not just receive results, produce results. In every area. Hallelujah. When our sister came up and said she got five points, I laughed. But I was impressed with her. But I'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row. That's notable enough. That's the type we can clap with and smile. 
set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i've put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone i keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah i want to get to a point where i will be so full of the holy ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over i want to run over please fill me up till i overflow I want to run. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You are a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something. The key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that. As a pastor, I'm better than this guy. As a great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible. Welfare personnel. Look at the condition to be in welfare. Full of the Holy Ghost. Welfare. To serve food. You needed to serve food with the anointing. So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small. The result is not yet notable enough. I tell you, compared to where we are going, this is child's play. We've not started anything. The level of excellence is still at its foundation. Foundation. We have not even done anything. That's how you challenge yourself. Don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain there. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you? A See, let me tell you something. Anything you are not competent in, just keep quiet about it. Talking about it will be disgracing yourself. There are so many people around. Ask them, what do you do? They say, I'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that God will bless me. Oh, I'm a driver. Like who? Where do you know? Challenge yourself. Don't mark yourself and say I'm good. There are many talented people inside and outside. Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way 
to find out how they rehearse. Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. Is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you're in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access on common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity
somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says kai but i gap you by how many points let's count no i'm not i'm not mocking it's, it's not a mockery i'm using it as an example don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam in fact i, I hear they are going to write it we'll pray for them at the end of the service it's a challenge it's a challenge i know that this teaching is touching some of you there are people who are seated right now you can pretend like what i'm saying is not serious there are many people standing outside right to the back some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives i want to excel in my life and i want my excellence to be intentional set a high standard koinonia set a high standard challenge yourself when god gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you i was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things i do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself i will stop doing some things because i've already created a system that will bless myself i've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of abraham implicated lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life please koinonia hear the voice of the spirit tonight it's time to settle down myself settle down and produce results stop guessing over your destiny prosperity is a reaction it's not dash advancement in ministry is a reaction we have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for bus or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand it's a formula find out what the formula is don't just enjoy and say kai this is a rich ministry find out what is the formula what is the secret of the anointing of the spirit upon our lives and the ministry find out do you care to find out are you humble enough to find out i always look at the people that are close to me and i always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when i look at people who are close to me i like to know what their passions are if you are close to a man of god there are pastors here be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn you are always seeing the result some of you come for koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes people are flying all over and just say kai apostle is anointed do you know it is for the taking Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise all i have needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. I want you to make two decisions tonight. One, that you will never complain and grumble again. It looks like an impossible situation. But I want you to make that determination that from today, 
I will never find myself opening my mouth to say, God, why? Why me? Why not you? Who else? Make a decision today. Hear me at this miracle service that you will never complain again. That you will tell yourself, my God is good all the time. Regardless of my experiences. This is how I am. You will never hear me open my mouth and say, God, why now? I wanted tea. Only sugar came. Can you bring bon vita and hot water? No. God, you are faithful at all times. Are we together? The Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine. Right? Make that decision. Decision number two. Make up your mind to be ever thankful. Ever thankful. Not when you get a testimony. Make it a lifestyle. Many of us thank God when they give you a testimony. Oh, a new shoe just arrived. A new tie just arrived. You must make up your mind. Let people believe that every day is Christmas or New Year for you because of your attitude of gratitude. People come to your house and you say, Lord, I thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for abundance. You are a good God. And your friend says, I thought you said you just have Gary, no sugar. You say, exactly. Say, somebody just sent you an alert, Abi. No, my God is faithful. That's how I am. In Nigeria, yes, that's how I am. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. God is ministering to you. To the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. His son, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Sing it with faith in your heart. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you make decisions that will keep you consistent number one avoid complain nothing slows down consistency nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complain and grumbling let me tell you something murmuring is sin murmuring is not just wrong write it down murmuring is sin you find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring. The Bible says they limited the Holy One by murmuring. Complaining. Lord, you should have done this. Lord, you should have done this. And make a decision under God. Advise yourself that I need to be consistent. And I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again. That does not mean everything will be a bed of roses, I tell you. Challenges will come. But you must make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not murmur. Number two, thanksgiving, I told us. That's the second decision that will make you consistent in life. Thanksgiving. Whether you have a reason to be thankful or not. Find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, 
her friends just poured um, I can't remember what they poured now caustic soda and the lady became blind on her birthday her friends careless friends rejoicing without sense poured caustic soda and now the lady for three four years now is blind but let me tell you I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos, we would visit her. We were so tired yesterday, but I made up my mind to visit with the family. And when we got there, she was blind. When she felt my hands, she was shouting, ah, Apostle, she was so happy. They were the first people to give me a birthday gift. Lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone. And the lady was so happy, joyful. Never for once did she tell me, Apostle, but will my eyes open? It seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny is shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? very happy lady she challenged me sincerely i thought about that experience even while we came today i said my goodness that means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy your gratitude you can choose to respond instead of reacting oh this is unfavorable but god is still faithful and lord i thank you everybody say thank you jesus Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for help. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping. Are you grateful Koinonia? Those outside, for some of you this is your miracle. As you are thanking God, you will find out that that sickness is no more there. It responds to gratitude. Lord I may not have money but thank you I have an account that is ready to receive your favor Hallelujah Hallelujah. Decision number three that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love. Walk in love. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Once there is no love in your heart, you just punch out the tank of your destiny. Get set for an empty tank. The moment there is no love, it's better that you do not have faith it's better that you do not have faith I guarantee you when all else fail in your life make sure your love does not fail love the antidote to offense you will find men and women who will be sarcastic they will say things ah are you aware that that woman is barren in case they've not told you know it now it's been 8 years all the children you see in a house are adopted. 
when you hear such a news it can break your spirit what if your own friends let you down what if those you trust you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor let me tell you something the bible says blessed are you when you are not offended there are a thousand and one reasons to be offended believe me when i tell you i have no offense in my life there is no man on earth that is in any blacklist i don't even have it i'm a happy person every list is white vision and fulfillment no blacklist now as a leader you can imagine how people treat you every day from waking up to all kinds of things on the road someone wants to jam you and then he's insulting you again and you now turn and tell him your father or your mother or whatever it is that you want to use and then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. No. Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail greater than potentials love never not love can fail and then readjust itself love never fails i give you the fail proof the fail proof key to living walk in love genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart towards people you don't like towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me and you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life you will see how God will let me tell you I have used this in my life God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do my love did for me forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty sing majesty majesty sing majesty majesty forever we are changed forever we are changed by your love we're in the presence of I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say lord take away bitterness from my heart that 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 spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when i'm afflicting pain at others oh apostle you don't know what they did to me i don't care i don't care what happened to you walking in love is a choice Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman until Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah. 
never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love I hate this person are you aware that I hate Pastor Alpha are you aware that I hate Mama I'm just keeping quiet the day his cup will be full see let me tell you those who talk like that never go far don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles only herbalists give miracles without love the the initiator of miracle is love he was moved with compassion he saw them as sheep without shepherd although they were insulting him he said father forgive them for they know not what they do love love the last decision that will help you become consistent are you ready is vision vision the Bible says without vision the people perish the word perish was not accurately translated the word there is to cast off restraint in other words to veer off from a path vision and nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I will build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level. That I will be a PhD holder. God told me. Prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out, a prophetic word comes. And God says, what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands. And it supplies strength. And you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now, I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you, when you hear something that is of God, there are things God has spoken about in my life, I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back, I had to go back and check my notes and said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about Koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so, I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December, I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. 
if it does not work at least I won't die but I know that I believe him do you believe God let me tell you something there is nothing God will tell you that looks possible if God tells you something that looks possible you didn't hear him because God speaks from his realm he will never tell you what is possible your brain and your job can tell you save to 200,000 in five months you have one million go and buy Toyota Camry that's your brain but God says I will give you the treasures of darkness and he said God how the how is none of your business here's how the Bible puts it he said just as you do not know the way of the wind nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child so also you do not know the way of the Lord God works in mysterious ways are we together somebody called me he's getting married next month and he said they did the budget they, they updated it and it was 2.7 I said how much do you have and he said he has 40,000 and I said don't, don't laugh I'm, I'm, listen it's not an irresponsible person I can tell you this it's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle and he said man of God will this thing come to pass I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaves and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaves. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaves and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. Because your standing is, let me watch in case it doesn't happen. Let me quickly dodge. And God says, I don't walk like that. You must be still. Then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith. Because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah! I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing exams and the person is laughing and say you are sweating, Abby. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here by the spirit of the living God that the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you, Kabakasuta Pratika Pariata, the Egyptians you see today you are not the first to see Egyptians. This man standing before you lives with Egyptians. It's not that I saw them. There, there, there is a level you get to as a leader. You don't conquer challenges. You walk through them. They, are, they become your companions. <laughs> ah, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says. I fear no evil. He says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says this, thou prepare. You are not in a hurry. You are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. We are going to pray. God is ministering to us. Please, I want to challenge somebody. Go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue. I don't know who asked you to stop that business. I know what stopped you. Pain stopped you. You opened the shop and everything dried. Go and open it again. Let them laugh at you. Go and open it. When you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here. 
that you should go back to what he asked you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things. But because of your pain and failure, you are saying, look, I'm, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. Never allow pain stop you from being consistent. Never allow the mockery of people. While they were mocking Noah, he was busy building the ark. While they were mocking him, after 90 years he continued. 100 years he continued. After 120 years, God said, Noah, get into the ark. I'm about to send the rain as I said. God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying God this is June this is June and God says don't insult me I am more than able to wipe your tears it's up to you to believe God oh this year you will get married God as I'm speaking to you right now there is no man in my life the last man who came came as as careless as he came that's how he went and God says it doesn't matter how long does it take to settle you let me tell you it doesn't take time to marry it just takes vision and finances once there is no money you shift dates when God brings his blessings he brings every resource to make it happen are we together yeah. God said you will be gainfully employed this year is June and the last place where you were holding on to Air Force just came out day before yesterday your name is not there are we together the person who would help you just called and said look young man um, I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron but I'm sad to announce to you even us we are standing to maintain our position and then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail that's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord. One more time. Lord, I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. We are going to pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. Rise up on your feet. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar 
when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you. 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 Manda brata shabarada balada bakosa pratika de balada bak. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today not tomorrow lift your voice and pray don't be a doubter the power of god is able to touch you and change your situation you've had the testimonies of others pray pray is part of the meeting Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Shabarakato saparada barati ke barada ba shabarada ba leka press kabere to subaya da ba. don't stop you are praying the Lord will do a quick walk here tonight change my story oh God change that genotype oh God Open up that womb, oh God. Rakata baba baka parada basa kata balada barias. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. In this place, have your way. Heal and deliver. In this place, heal and deliver. 
Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast what the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. Kabarakato zabarikata. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now. Everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now, right now, right now. The first overflow outside right now, right now, right now. Breakthrough. There is an angel of the Lord identifying men. Breakthrough. Bring them in. Breakthrough. Kata la kata. It's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough. I prophesy it as I mentioned that word. The grace, the anointing is visiting you. That stumbling block leaves you now. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Angels of breakthrough. I release them across this congregation right now. In all the overflows, the thousands following us online. Breakthrough, the power of God is touching you right where you are, right now. Right where you are, breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brakesi kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay, without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. Breakthrough. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay, delay just for delay right now right now like a string cut from you right now like a string cut from you inside and outside i command that spirit to leave delay 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 any destiny here under the influence of delay you can't stand it you can't stand it is the anointing of the holy ghost destroying delay that embargo of delay you are cursed 
by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven the spirit of delay I curse you over God's people this is a miracle service delay that has kept you down that has kept you down that has kept your family down hallelujah lift your hands everybody the Lord wants to visit families the second overflow outside I see the Lord touching men as I begin to pray right now every family under any embargo at the count of three fire falls on you now one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire take that fire inside outside embargoes over families embargoes over families take that fire take that fire take that fire by the message of the God of heaven take that fire take that fire take that fire is coming on you like rain like the dew of heaven take that fire hallelujah hallelujah I don't know who this mama is but madam an angel of the Lord is touching you right now as I'm speaking to you fire is coming upon you an angel of the Lord right now right now right now right now Oh God, once again confirm this call and anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing several gates opening. Hear me. And the Lord said, this is the womb of many people. Please, I want to pray for you right now. The Lord is opening barren wombs. That's what God is showing me. Whether miscarriage or no children completely, I don't care what it is. Lift your hands for you and for your loved ones. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power to perform be released right now. Every barren womb for you and your loved ones. I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb. Right now, every barren womb. Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every closed door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Be open. There is an anointing to open it. Every gate, every door, kaparakata, kepere shopa. Fire is burning in this place. I command gates. I command doors. 
be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every chain tying my life stopping me from making progress in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Open your mouth and pray. I break that chain. I break that chain. It's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Change. Shakata bakata leke teke te. Reke teke teke te be de bosh. E breke te koto soto koto. Makata ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits that's right that will stop them from advancing but right now at the count of three everywhere in all the overflows father i pray once again validate this anointing once again validate this apostolic and prophetic call at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and i command every spirit to leave one Two, three. Right now, right now. Every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit. Out of them now. Out of their destiny now. Strange spirits. Strange spirits. Like fire. It comes upon you. Ababa shakata the refiner's fire setting men free hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands lift your hands I tell you I feel this thing on me right now ah! I want to pray for you watch this the Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones. And I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says these are the altars. That have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category. Physical fire. Physical fire. Will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now. I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now. Fire. Fire, fire on every devil, fire on every spirit, fire on every altar. Let it burn, 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 let it burn every altar, let it burn every altar. Release God's people, release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. 
you are receiving direction right now wherever you are direction is coming direction is coming direction is coming confusion is ending direction on ministry direction on career direction on marriage it comes to you right now right now by the anointing direction is coming direction is coming direction is coming direction is coming hallelujah hallelujah the lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely just do what i'm asking you to do something will happen to you go ahead blast in tongues for the next five minutes Come on, pray. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Regina? Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight. I command every power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. Every spirit represented here, I'm saying it again right now, no matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load. Pack your failure out of their destinies. Hallelujah. Regina. You are Regina, ma. Please come. Come on. I have to pray for you. I'm looking at you, ma, and I'm seeing the spirit of death upon you. Don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I look at you and I'm looking at a corpse, like somebody that has died. I'm seeing uh, what they call it, um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears as I'm looking at you physically. And the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle. I don't know what is wrong with you. Come. Walk to me, man. Hold my hands. Right now, I command that spirit. Your time is over. Right now. Out! Right now. Be gone. Now. Be gone. Right now.
out 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me oh chronic leg ulcer ah I see it here it's not healing what is it is rotting or something is rotting is refusing to dry up that devil madam you feel pain on your legs pain on your legs you believe God will heal you a spirit just left you that's what they call leg ulcer and the reason I don't know if they diagnosed you but I'm looking at you and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes huh? that's the cause of this thing that's why it's not here I'm not a doctor I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me this thing is diabetes and that's why this thing is not healing stand up walk carry her up or God help your mother now why are you watching madam look at me in the name of Jesus Christ no, no, you don't have to lift it. I bring life to these legs. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Move it. Move it. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Just look at me. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Walk. Come. Come to me. Come. Come. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Look at this. Go ahead. Lift it up. Look at this. Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her in the name of Jesus lift it up that devil goes I command it to dry now not later right now it dries up dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost give Jesus praise give Jesus praise Lord Regina. hallelujah there is a lady from Kogi state right now I don't know where she is but you will locate her by a shout I sincerely don't know what I'm saying. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is bondage that has been for so long in your family. And God is saying today you are, you are set free. From Kogi State, one lady. Fire will land on her wherever she is. Whether it, where is she from? Who knows her? Where is she from? Eh? Is she from Kogi State? Bring her out. It's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people. I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene. Okene is a place in Kogi state. There is a visitation coming to that territory. Right now. People who belong from that territory. An anointing is coming right now. I'm not saying you should clap. I'm saying you should receive right now i don't know where they are but all those from okene i release an anointing right now by the power of the holy ghost inside and outside strange visitations god is bringing visitation to that territory right now if you are from that place that name is a code in the spirit it locates you wherever you are in the name of the lord jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain.
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying as this medal comes, he's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord said you should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shatabata. Rise, rise, rise. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand. Two of you, hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace the gifts of the spirit is coming on both of you right now strange gift the Lord is saying is the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the spirit the gifts of the spirit lift your hands I see gifts falling on people gifts falling on people gifts 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 gift right now gift help them please help them gift there are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God, men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now. Right now. Gifts. Gifts. The prophetic. Gifts. The prophetic. Gifts. The prophetic. Eyes to see. Yes to hear. Eyes to see. Yes to hear. Kaba shakata, badi kata di kabaritos. Dera bara basi de balada balada da 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 da. Job said there is a part which no eye has seen. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again because I see it. Hear me. There are many people. You don't hear me pray this prayer, but I hear word of knowledge. There are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit. Wherever you are, I stand upon this anointing. Receive it right now. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Ay, 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 ay. Revelatory gifts. Kapatata. Rakatatata. Abarata. I stretch my hands. Step into that level. The word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. The discerning of spirits. Ay, 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 Shabarada Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress and the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen, it's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle. You can wear it like a garment. Father, I pray. There are people, this is the miracle you need. That mantle of favor. 
across this building the overflow the next overflow online right now on everyone everyone under the sound of my voice may mantles of favor come upon you right now mantles of favor come upon you right now Lord on everyone let no one be left let no one be left wear it like a garment wear it like a garment wear it like a garment let it open strange doors for you hallelujah hallelujah our time is gone we have to be fast my goodness now listen before we pray for the sick there's no time to just pray and ask them to come and so we pray for the sick but before we do that if you have your prayer request lift it up this is very strange what the Lord shows me usually we bring it out and lay it here but the Lord is asking please if it's in a phone maybe your loved ones wrote it leave the phone up it's not we're not playing games please please don't come and waste your time there is a God that answers prayers my dear come you are Regina I have to pray for you because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family are you hearing what I'm saying there is a lot of suffering and pain in your family and the Lord is asking that I pray for you number one number two for you the Lord is saying I should tell you it stops I don't know what is that but the Lord is saying it stops from today it stops hold my hands father bring your word to pass in the life of this lady right now in the name of Jesus over your family I command that that pain that captivity comes to an end and for you the prophecy is that it stops I don't know what it is but I stop it right now right now right now right now right now it stops kaba shiba ratusia ende la rusa pras kubarita shubria tabalada those online i know that there are hundreds of prayer requests no problem the media department is stretching it by faith those outside don't worry you will lift it before we submit it if there's something you should write and you've not written you will quickly write it before we pray but the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute seriously and violently on your request are we together in one minute just speak over it are you not the God that answers prayers Lord when you speak it may look foolish when you speak it may look foolish but we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word pray answers are falling answers are falling from heaven just in one minute. Shabakata da 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 the Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically, you will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request... The fire that brings performance. Shakata bakata. Zike kerebo soto barata. Parite shaliadaka. Den da kaporo sopatiana baka. 
the fire that brings answers let it begin to follow God on prayer requests right now let the fire that brings answers fall on them turning the requests into testimonies turning the requests kabashikata ente karata there's authority in this place turning the requests into testimonies hallelujah now begin to forward them to the ushers please ushers quickly start collecting them while they are doing that please be careful with those in front some of them are under the anointing so don't match them you are here trusting God for healing specifically I want to lay my hands on you now make your way to the front you came with a sick person it's time to bring them to the front very quickly as we worship in your presence there is healing the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing we believe I like you to believe the Lord as we worship in your presence there is healing let your faith be alive the power of God is already touching people it's flowing Please listen I don't care what the name of that sickness is you must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling you must be healed are you hearing don't say this one is not serious uh -uh. when you are coming here insist and say Lord from my head to my toe I must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the Holy Ghost the anointing is already touching people some of you we may not even need to come close to you is the power of God while that is happening I want everybody in the congregation we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer no carelessness and gisting around begin to speak to God concerning your prayer request there are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing in every city and in every territory God must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV. Diabetes. Tumor. Breast lump. Breast lump. A lot of breast lump. The Lord is going to heal you. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, please come. We are going to pray. Listen. There is the anointing upon him. Come here, Jimmy. There is fire upon my hands. And I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says I should tell you. To touch my hands and touch that healing anointing. That healing power. Miracle worker. Ah. You are the miracle worker. Come, Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here. Everyone. And for those you are standing for, you have the photos of any everyone, don't worry. While we are coming, just show the photos, whether it's phone or whatever. We will lay hands on it. Believe God. Please, no commotion. As we pray for you, just gently walk to your seat. Because of time, we don't take instant testimonies. Please forgive us. But make sure you are praying. Don't just stand looking at others carelessly. Let your heart be open. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Help us. You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. 
Those, those being prayed for, don't worry. Just focus. We're praying for you. But everyone, pray on the request. Out! Right now. Stretch your hands on the request and pray. I command the spirit of death to leave you right now. Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. Prophesy and say, Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God. Higher than any other. His arms 
Time is gone. Thank you for your patience. It's called a miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. Yeah. Those still on the healing lines, don't worry. Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands. And let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredika shabriata. Are you praying? Prophesy. Lord, we declare the miracle walking power of Jesus. The miracle walking power of Jesus. The miracle walking power of Jesus. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus we declare we declare we have brought them before the altar they will never return to your life you have handed it before the altar it will never return to your life you've handed it before the altar of God it will never return to your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. Immediately after that, we'll take the altar call. Our time is gone, but even if it's two minutes, we have to give people who are making commitments for the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody, and receive the final prophecy. These prophecies are powerful. That's why you hear people returning back with testimonies. The prophetic words change lives. In my opinion, you've heard me say it again and again. I believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service. Not everyone may come out here. Not everyone may fall under the anointing, but the prophecy can come upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians that you see over your life, over your destiny, I declare that by this miracle service, you see them no more forever. I declare that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has delayed you, the level you are supposed to have been, I don't know what that level is, but I don't know what stopped you from getting to that level right now. Between now and next miracle service, run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow. In the name of Jesus. I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase. That which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year, I command in the name of Jesus, you will experience it. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Revive now thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year. It says revive now thy work. I don't know what has gone cold in your life. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe your word life. But by the message of the God of heaven I pray. Let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before men conspire against you, may God open your eyes to see. Hallelujah. Where men have said you can never get to, the embargo they have put on your destiny, 
I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. That unction, that anointing that gives men capacity to be extraordinary. I command it to fall upon you right now. I command it to fall upon you right now. For all final year students, there is a finisher's anointing. The grace that grants men access to finish. In the name of Jesus, as you push this one last time, may the heavens push with you. May the heavens push with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every disfavor, every bad luck, everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life, I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes money run away from your hand, whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you, I command that spirit to live your life forever. I release abundance of financial supplies to you. Abundance of financial supplies. The spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things. In the name of Jesus, as this month comes to an end, it drives that spirit out of your life. I will always pray this prayer for you. I call again the helpers of your destiny. I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer. But in the name of Jesus, may they appear in your life. Hallelujah. I want to pray a special prayer for you. One of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access. God has given me strange dimensions of access access to men of influence access to men of authority i pray for you in this season whatever will connect you to men of influence not just men who can help you but men who have the ability to help you may that connection happen in the name of jesus may that connection happen in the name of jesus Everything that has died in your hands, I don't care for how long. In the name of Jesus, I command resurrection upon it. I pray for you. The resources you have in your hand, grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. It to multiply. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry. May that supernatural glory, that presence, may that aura go with you everywhere you go. Whoever has said no to you, I change their statements. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual hunger. What good is it? If you get money, you get all of these things. And with it, you lose your passion. That whatever you lose in life, may your passion for God not be one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you submitted here as a prayer request, we turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. In this period of my birthday, as the Lord blesses me, I pray that he will bless you too. Believe me, I'm praying for you from my heart. That whatever God does for me, by his mercies, the mercies of the God of David, may he do it for you. As God lifts me, may he lift you. As God wipes my tears, may he wipe your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time we're looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus. May your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
everyone called barren go and return with your miracle children everyone called jobless go and return with a miracle job everyone due for promotion you had the testimony of prof in the name of Jesus may the God that lifts men promote you promote your loved ones promote you and your loved ones in the name of Jesus may you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes while you are sleeping may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with Ay, 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 ay. our time is gone but receive this I say it again that while you are sleeping may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you every gift you have but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you there are many of us who have potentials but those who need it that access to them is far I connect you to those who need your gift I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah while others are walking may you fly by the wings of the spirit may you fly by the wings of the spirit don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you don't let the devil make you think he's just talking I'm not just talking I say it again while men are walking may the Lord give you wings with which you will fly every family represented here not just as individuals as a family return with your testimony what you have been praying for to happen in your family I declare that between now and the end of June may you begin to record testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ two minutes very quickly you're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing. No movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord, but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for the first person. God bless you. Run out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, make your ways right. Make your ways right. It doesn't matter what you have done. God is giving you as many chances as will take to be restored to him. Make your way to the front. You need Jesus. The Lord is calling you. God bless you. Please, if you are coming, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up so that we save time. Clear the way for them, especially in the overflow outside hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands if you're coming out then join them say after me Lord Jesus I love you we're hurrying up but it doesn't mean we're joking say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you tonight I surrender my heart I surrender my life I surrender my all Take me, use me, anoint me for your glory. From today, I am yours forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this prayer will be sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. You keep rising from glory to glory. Your love and passion for God will never diminish. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for answer of the altar call. Just make your way out. There's someone waving his hands. They're waving their hands to you and they'll have your details. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia.
want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless 